Hi Elaine here, in this video I shall be taking a look at Photo, a fantastic free photo editing application for the Mac. Photo is a relatively new photo application for the Mac and the very latest version of it is not only a photo editor but also a collage maker. But today I'll be focusing on the photo editing side of the application. It's available from the Mac App Store, as you can see there, and it is indeed free of charge. So once you've got it and you've installed it, when you run the application you'll be greeted with this welcome dialog box. And this is where the application splits into two. There is the photo editing aspect of it and the collage aspect. So I'm looking to edit a photo, so I will choose the first option. And the first thing it needs me to do is to drag a photo in to start. So I do have a photo. I have a stock photo from Photolia. So I'm going to drag and drop that in. It's quite a large image and it's a very nicely exposed image, but I'm going to make it look very different. So the way Photo works, it doesn't have the individual tools that you may be used to in something like Photoshop or Pixelmator. It has a range of tools available and they are available from the right hand side. But the first thing you have available is scenes and with scenes you don't have to drill down into the individual tools. So I could choose a darkened scene and it will darken it or fluorescent and really here I'm working with the light aspects of it, so landscape, all different light aspects of it. Now I'm not going to use scenes with this one so I'm going to make sure that I have none on there. And I'm not going to go through every option, what I'm going to do is to change this image to fit a website. I want it to fit a website. So um, I need it to have a different colour, a different tone and an overall different look to it. And I'm going to do that by using just four of the options that are available within Photo. So I'm going to start with the effects. So over here on the right hand side, click the effects option. And in here you have five groups of effects. So they are grouped together in classic. Lomo, black and white, which gives you a whole different range of black and white treatments, vignette and art. So all very, very different, as you can see. Just to give you an idea, if you go down to something like HK Film, very, very oversaturated. Now, I'm not going for something quite that oversaturated today. I'm going to go back to the vignette and I am going to choose Dallas which is um, a little bit overdone, but uh, not to worry. Now you'll notice here that in these groups, um, this one doesn't have, it only has the 10, it doesn't have a lot of them, but if I go into some of the others that do, so let's try out this Lomo one, you can see I do get this scroll bar and I can scroll down to show uh, extra options. If you're working on a bigger screen than I'm working on at the moment, then you won't have to scroll down. You will also notice that it is a free application and there are adverts down in the bottom here, which I'm trying manfully to ignore. So I have chosen Dallas. That is the effect that I have chosen. Once I've chosen my effect in here, um, you have an intensity slider. So I can dial back the intensity of that right back to very, very slight or right up to 100% of it. Just so you can really see the effect there, if I choose something like turquoise, you can see there is a huge, huge difference with that intensity slider. So very, very different. But for now, I'm going to leave it on Dallas and I'm going to leave it at 100%. And the next thing I'm going to do is to refocus that image. A lot of the image is in focus. Now, it does have a, have a nice depth of field on it. The bricks here are blurred, as with a depth of field, but I want to refocus the image so it's focusing on this left foot and particularly the buckle area of the left foot. And to do that, I'm going to use the tilt shift option. Now, the first thing to notice with the tilt shift, as soon as I select it, there is a mode option at the top. And here I'm choosing between the circular tilt shift and this one, which is a straight tilt shift. Now, it's straight and at the moment it's vertical, but you can grab these handles and alter that. So I could make that focus on the left leg if I wanted to. And the lines here will refocus more tightly and uh, I can change it like that and I can widen it out there, which widens the whole thing. But it's not the whole of the leg that I want to focus on. So I really need this circular mode here. So I'm going to go back to that. And what I need to do there is to move it to where I want the centre. And I want the centre around the buckle area. And then extend it as far as I would like to be sharply focused. And extend that to make it a little bit more gentle. 
And then I realise I, it's not precisely the buckle that I want it on. I want that heel in focus a little bit more. So I'm going to drag it down slightly to about there. And now once I've got it in the right position, I can then use these options and this will change the aperture so I can have it up to f22 or take it right down to 1.4. And as you can see, as I take it down, it blurs much more considerably. So uh, take it up slightly and find something that you're comfortable with, depending on the type of image that you want. And I think for that one, F4 does it quite nicely. And I think I'll tighten that in a little bit. So uh, let me just drag that in. There we go. So I have refocused the image using Tilt Shift. Now, next thing I'm going to do is to adjust the vignette on it. And to do that, I'm going to use the adjust option. So back up to the adjust option. Now in here, you can extend what you have done with the effects. So I could change the saturation, the contrast, the brightness, the exposure, and get a little bit more granular control with it. What I'm interested in here is the vignette at the bottom. And I want to take that up a bit so I darken those corners and really focus on this left foot here. So darken it not all the way. If I show you what all the way looks like, that is considerably overdone. So I will dial it back a little so it's just there and I can see it. So it's just adding to it. So I have made that change with the adjustment. So the first one that I did was effects and then I went to tilt shift to refocus and then I went up to adjust. And now I'm going to go into the last one for this image, which is borders. Now, when I go into borders, you have a lot of options in here and they're, they're very nice. So uh, as you can see, there is a scroll bar. There is a lot of different options. And they really do change the overall impact of your image. So if I show you what uh, just a black background looks like and then compare that with a white one, it really does change the image. There's that Cleopatra, which is more like a photo album or a wooden one, which does actually go quite nicely with the colours I've selected. But some of them just don't add to it at all. So if I look at this one, it really isn't appropriate for the image. There's a blue stamp as well, makes it look like a postage stamp, but again, doesn't really add to that image at all. What I want to do with it is choose this film. And that's more of the look that I'm looking for. So what I've got there now is all the changes that I really want to make with it. Now it's going to be difficult for me to think, have I taken it far enough? But what I can do is use the compare option here to compare the original image. So I'm clicking and holding that with a left mouse button. And when I let go, it shows me all the changes that I've got applied to it. Now I've seen it, I've made quite a few changes, but I think I want to go back and change the adjustment and make the corners a little bit darker. So if I go back there, that actually merges in quite nicely with the border that I've selected. And once I've done that, I'm ready to export it. Now I can share directly from here. So if I click on that, I get a little menu at the top, which allows me to share it to Facebook, Twitter, Flickr or email. But I actually want to save this file and I want to put it uh, at the moment. I'll put it on my desktop, which I really shouldn't do, but I will. So I'm going to export it. And the first thing I have to do is determine what file format I want. So I open this as a JPEG, but I can now select PNG, bitmap or TIFF. So I'll go for a TIFF. Next thing I need to do is to specify a save location for it. So I will put it on my desktop. So put it on the desktop. I'm not going to rescale it. I'm going to leave it at the full size that it was. And the fourth option that you have here is the JPEG quality. Now, obviously that dims out when you choose anything other than JPEG in the top option for the file name. So uh, that isn't available, but if it were, it would be high, normal or low. And then all I have to do is to save that image and it says saving photo and it has successfully saved it on my desktop. So uh, let's lose that one. There is the file on my desktop. And if I double click on that, it will open it up in whatever I have that is handling TIFFs as the default for the system, which in this case is preview. And there is my image. That is um, the, the after. And if I open up the before, you can see the difference between the two. So a very, very different image now with just a few clicks. I didn't need to understand what the options were. The options were just available. They had strange names like Dallas, but it really is the situation with photo. Just go in there, have a play around with the options and you can create some fairly stunning images. So I'm sure I shall return to photo in the future. But for now, I hope that has been helpful.
And if you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. And if you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.